Hello everyone, today we are going to be going over my absolute favorite PvP build I have created, and that is my Bloodhound's Fang buffed bleed build. This build is similar to my bleed guide with buffing, as I use several incantations in this build. Before we get started, I will be going over the minimum requirements you need for this guide since you will be using incantations to buff. The minimum requirements are as follows. 25 Faith, 10 Arcane, 17 Dexterity, and 18 Strength. Now that we have the minimal stats out of the way, let's get started on building your character. To start the build off, obtain Bloodhound's Fang from Bloodhound Knight Dairywill located at the Forlorn Hound Everjail in Limgrave. From here, grab an offhand seal like the Finger Seal located in Round Table Hold. The Dragon Communion Seal also works located in Fringeful Kiro's Grave. If you'd like to use spells in the future, make sure you max the seal out. Progressing into the build more, it's time to grab your incantations. The first incantation, Blood Flame Blade, can be located at this location dropped by a Scarab in Liurnia of the Lakes. Blood Flame Blade buffs your weapon with 40 bleed over the course of 2 seconds, providing a total of 95 bleed buildup on your Bloodhound's Fang. Blood Flame Blade will also add a .40 incant scaling as fire damage counted as faith only. The incantation effect also lasts 60 seconds. The second incantation, Flame Grant Me Strength, can be located in Fort Gale, found behind the fort under the flamethrowers. Flame Grant Me Strength provides a plus 20% physical and fire attack power buff in PvE and 15% in PvP. This incantation effect lasts 30 seconds. The third and final incantation, Golden Vow, can be located at the Corpse Stench Shack in Mount Gelmir. Golden Vow provides a 15% damage increase and 10% damage reduction in PvE, while in PvP it grants a 7.5% increase and 5% reduction to damage. The effect of Golden Vow lasts 80 seconds. You now have your staple incantations and weapons to use for the build, next we will discuss the armor. For the helmet, the Okina Mask is a great option, as it provides a plus 3 dexterity boost. The Okina Mask can be located at the Church of Repose after defeating Bloody Finger Okina. For the torso, gloves, and greaves, I typically go for a heavyweight build consisting of veteran armor, bull goat armor, or radon armor. The veteran set can be obtained from Round Table Hold after defeating Commander Nile at Castle Soul. The bull goat set can be obtained after completing Patch's questline and defeating the Great Horn Tregoth. Radon's armor can be obtained after defeating Radon and Kaelid found in the Round Table Hold. You now have your armor out of the way, so let's move on to the physic and potion balancing. Switch your potions to an 11 health 3 mana ratio as you will not be needing FP as often. Mix a Cerulean Hidden Tier and Dexterity Tier into your vial. The Cerulean Hidden Tier can be dropped off of the Ulcerated Tree Spirit in Mount Gelmir outside of Volcano Manor. This will provide you 10 seconds of no mana consumption so you can save all of your mana while buffing before fighting. The Dexterity Tier can be located northwest of the Scenic Isle side of Grace. This tier will provide you a plus 10 Dexterity Boost to top off your damage for maximum output. For the final part of the build, we will go over talismans and synergies they will have with each other for wearing your heavy armor. For Tree's favor, you can use the plus one or plus two variant, whichever one you have access to currently. The plus one variant can be found while fighting Mog the Omen in Lindell Sewers right behind his spawn. The plus two variant can be found in Lindell Capital of Ash surrounded by three ulcerated tree spirits outside of the entrance to the lift. The Great Jar's arsenal can easily be obtained after defeating three of the Jar Knights in Kaelid. Radagon's Sword Seal can be looted off of a body in Fort Faroth. The Crimson Amber Medallion plus two can be found in the open grate outside of Lindell Capital of Ash. The Old Lord's Talisman can be located south of the Great Bridge in Crumbling Furu Missoula and down the ladder. Alexander's Shard can be obtained after completing his questline in Crumbling Furu Missoula. The reason why I included 5 Talismans is due to players wanting to switch synergy for defense and vice versa. The Crimson Amber Medallion plus 2 provides a nice health boost if you don't want to run Radagon's Sword Seal. Now we will go over different synergies that you can use with this build. The optimal loadout is as follows. Great Jar's Arsenal, Radagon's Sword Seal, Crimson Amber Medallion, and Erdtree's Favor. This is the staple I use in my build as it provides you the following stats. Plus 27% increase to max equip load, plus 12% HP increase, plus 9.6% stamina increase, and plus 5 strength, dexterity, vigor, and endurance. This gives you extremely well-rounded power as you have the HP to sustain attacks while having equip load to hold poise and heavy armor. Radagon's Sword Seal or the Crimson Amber Medallion can be switched out in replacement for the Old Lord's Talisman, as the Old Lord's Talisman will extend buff 
buffs by 30%, making use for longer PvP fights. Good work, we have the entire build out of the way. Let's take a look and see what you should expect when doing this build. To start, assort your incantations in the following order. Golden Vow, Blood Flame Blade, and Flame Grant Me Strength. Allowing Flame Grant Me Strength to buff last is essential to high DPS output, as it could mean ending the fight in one shot. Now on to engaging in a fight. Drink your Physic, providing you unlimited mana for 10 seconds and plus 10 dexterity for 3 minutes. Use Golden Vow, Blood Flame Blade, and Flame Grant Me Strength for 22.5% extra damage, 5% reduction, and 95 bleed buildup with fire scaling damage. When playing with this build, you always want to hold off on engagement, as catching your opponent out will grant you additional time to perform your Bloodhound's Finesse. When you have your opponent caught out, use Bloodhound's Finesse. Only follow up with Bloodhound's Step if you are certain you will be safe for a second or two after. This is very important since you will be vulnerable. Otherwise, you should cancel the attack by not using any movement. Use rolling sweep attacks for movement while attacking. If you run out of mana, you can still use the Ash of War, but don't use it as often as it will be a lot easier to be caught off guard as well as lower DPS. Use the aforementioned sweep attacks if you need to close in on your opponent for finishing them off. I have been using this build for a long time now and it has not failed me once on dishing out high damage in short periods of time. The only downside to Bloodhound's Fang is the long pause between the step and the frontal pivot, as it will get you caught out at times and can only be used at a thin angle, but it is still a great weapon regardless. This is the end of the video. If you would like to watch more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to see when my next video releases. I will also be streaming this build on Friday and Saturday at 11pm PST over at twitch.tv slash so stop in and say hey or challenge me to a duel. Thanks, and have a wonderful day.